I've forgotten which Western philosopher said it, but I remember it from one of my classes in school, that all wisdom begins with consciousness of death. Realizing that we, we are going to die forces us to take stock of our lives and our actions. Realizing we have a limited amount of time, and it's important to make the most of the time we've got. Of course, that reflection can go off in all sorts of directions. Some people say, well, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we may die. So it takes more than just consciousness of death to make you wise. It also requires a consciousness of your actions, the power of your actions to make a real difference. That's why the Buddha said that heedfulness lies at the root of all skillful qualities. Realize it's not just a matter of limited time, but lots of important choices. And you want to be very, very careful about those choices because they really do make a difference. That's the underlying insight of heedfulness. Now this too is sparked by consciousness of death, but there's that passage of the four heavenly messengers. It tells of a person who's lived a very heedless life, dies, is taken before the Lord of Hell. And the Lord of Hell said, Why did you behave yourself so poorly? Didn't you see the messengers that were sent to warn you? And the guy said, No, I didn't see any messengers. And the Lord of Hell describes four messengers, a sick person, an old person, a dead person, and a person in prison undergoing punishment. He said, These are the things that should have warned you. You've got to live heedfully. So it's always good to keep these things in mind, to keep our, our actions in line with the path, in line with what really is skillful. And it's good to take that statement that all skillful qualities are rooted in heedfulness and combine it with another passage from the canon that all qualities are rooted in desire. Heedfulness, too, is based on desire. Perhaps the best description of that desire is from a passage in a John Munn's biography toward the end, where John Munn is giving his final sermon. He talks about the practice as being like a battle, and the soldier in the battle needs all kinds of help. The weapon, the soldier's weapon, is mindfulness and discernment. The food that keeps the soldier going is concentration. And what's most interesting about the passage is where John Munn identifies the soldier. He says, the desire not to come back and be the laughingstock of the defilements ever again. In other words, not to be fooled by your own mind. Because if you let yourself get fooled, then you're going to come back and suffer all the more. And John Mahabhava said that, when he was with Ajahn Mun, Ajahn Mun would talk about his practice and talk about all the mistakes he had made. Unfortunately, that those, those are not recorded in the biography. The biography was intended more to point out all of his good habits and all of his good qualities. But it really would have been educational to hear about what kind of mistakes Ajahn Mun made. Because you think about it, he was off in the forest alone, and it's very easy for a person meditating alone to get all kinds of wrong ideas about what's happening. So the question is, how do you recognize a mistake, and how do you move on? There's a piece of advice that John Mun gave to John Mahaboy. He says, when anything comes up in your mind that you're not sure about, just watch. Stay with a sense of the knower or the observer, without being quick to jump to conclusions. And regardless of whatever it is that's happening. As long as you just stay with the knower, you're safe.
because this is one of the things we have to be very careful of in our meditation. It's the mind's tendency to play tricks on itself. When you take care of greed, aversion, and delusion in their blatant forms, they can come back in their subtle forms. And so you just want to watch, watch, watch what's going on. That's one of the most important weapons the soldier has. That is a part of discernment. Because as long as you have that desire not to come back and be fooled again, you have to be very alive to the fact that you, can, you have been fooled many, many times in the past. And that's why we're here. You can ask yourself, how much longer do you want to keep coming back and being fooled again? This is even why with stream enters, the Buddha said, you've got to be heedful. That famous last message of the Buddha, bring your practice to completion through heedfulness. He delivered that to a group of monks, of which the most backward, they said, was a stream enter. Some had already had the first taste of awakening. It's possible for stream winners, even stream winners, to be heedful, heedless. So whatever your attainment, the same holds true for everybody up through non-returners. You've always got to be heedful. You've always got to keep watch on what the mind is doing. Ubasika Gee brings up this principle in her teaching. She says, as soon as you gain an insight, you have to watch immediately what does the mind do or say right after the insight. It's not enough to be right. You have to learn how to take that right insight and use it properly and observe what it does to the mind. Because the tendency to fool yourself is so ingrained. I mean, this is why the Buddha said the big problem is uh, we cha, ignorance. And we cha, the opposite of ignorance also means not, knowledge, not only knowledge, but also means skill. We suffer because we have a lack of skill in dealing with the greed, aversion, and delusion that can so easily slip in and influence our thoughts, our words, and our deeds. Which is why the image of the soldier is so appropriate. The soldier doesn't get by simply by knowing how to shoot a gun or shoot an arrow or whatever. The soldier has to know strategy. How to figure out when, when the enemy comes from one side. You have to be sure that the enemy is not also sending a few forces in from behind. This image of a warrior in battle is not one that you hear much in Western Buddhism. Everyone likes to think that whatever comes up in the still mind is reliable. But the still mind is just as likely to be deluded as an unstill mind. When the mind gets still, it's like you're opening up the doors to different rooms in your, in your house that have been closed for a long time. And just because the doors have been closed doesn't mean that there are valuables in the rooms. Sometimes the rooms just contain your old junk. So whatever comes up, you've always got to be careful. Stay with the observer. Put a post-it note on it in case you have to move the notes around. And then just keep watching. Why? Because you want to be heedful. And why do you want to be heedful? Because you've seen the suffering that comes from aging, illness, and death, and separation. And you realize that the suffering comes from your own actions. 
So heedfulness is based on informed desire. A desire that's informed by discernment. And the discernment gets sharper the more you learn to use it in practice. As you catch little things you didn't see before and you learn how to deal with them more and more effectively. So keep that image of the soldier in mind. It's probably why John Munn used it to end a talk. His last talk. The same way that the Buddha ended his last words, that injunction on heedfulness, underlying that quality, underlying that image. So that we don't forget. We can use it to keep motivating our heedfulness. And we can develop the skills that we need.